Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep, we're good. Okay, so my name is Chris Shad. I'm a co-founder and co-owner of the Bee Shed. My business partner, John Shanyo, is back there. So um, uh, he's the brains behind the operation. So just a little bit about uh, our business. We uh, produce and sell honey. We do pollination services, and we actually sell bees. We are a specific benefit corporation, or a, a, a B Corp, uh, if you will. Um, our public benefit missions are promotion and development of pollinator habitat, education of the general public about bees and pollinator habitat, and the mentorship of new or novice beekeepers. What that means is we put some of our time and our energy and our money into the promotion of our, our, of our public benefit. Last year, as an example, in 2018, we drove about 1,000 miles to provide 36 classes or presentations. We hit about 1,000 people over the, 1,100 people over the year uh, with our presentations. We've got about 1,000 followers on Facebook. We're not quite there yet, but if everybody in this room were to follow us on Facebook, yeah. uh, we would get to 1,000. <laughs> So uh, I get the question a lot, what is involved in beekeeping? And we tend to divide the world into hobby beekeepers and business people beekeepers. So um, for the hobbyists on the left, the beekeeping year starts in April and ends in September for the most part. For commercial beekeepers, they have that as well. But then they also have other things that they're doing. In the fall, they're preparing their bees for springtime pollination. And they're hauling their bees out to California. And from January, February, and March, their bees are out in California pollinating almond crops. And that's actually what's happening right now. And then for those commercial beekeepers that are also bottling and selling honey, that's a year-round thing. They're doing that um, all 12 months out of the year. The bee shed is somewhere in between the two. We do a lot of those things, uh, but not at the scale of commercial operations. So a little bit about the market itself and in the industry. Um, in terms of production versus demand, demand for honey is exceeding supply. So the United States is a net importer of honey. Rising retail prices, no surprise, demand is exceeding supply, so retail prices are going up. And this is a really interesting one most people aren't really familiar with, but pollination services, the cost or the price of doing pollination services is going up. It's really hard to see the numbers, but this goes from $135 per colony up to $195 per colony in the last 10 years. So at $195 per colony, 10 and 15,000 colonies out to California for almond pollination. So I can't do that math, but there's a lot of zeros and commas in there. So that looks like a good place to start a business. This is a little bit of a synopsis of what we do. Almond pollination, we sent our bees out to California. We put them on a little trailer. They got put onto a big trailer. They got hauled out to California. This is what the almond groves in California look like right now. It's horizon to horizon almond trees that are in bloom. We also sell bees in the springtime. That's John there. So hobby beekeepers, if they need new bees in the spring, they come in a caged box. And uh, so we are selling bees right now in an, uh, another month, give or take. We'll be delivering those bees, or they'll be picking those bees up from us. That's part of what we do. The bulk of our business is producing and selling honey. So um, our honey is raw minimally processed. We don't filter it. We don't strain it. Uh, what you get is what the bees get. It's not pasteurized. Because it contains the pollen, it tends to crystallize a little bit sooner, so we bottle on demand. I was up at, this is what you do when you have a side hustle. I was up at 4 a.m. this morning bottling honey for orders that came in from stores. And John's going to schlep it to the stores tomorrow. So it's the, the, the honey that we put on on store shelves um, is right out of the bottling tank. Our honey has a unique flavor from every yard it comes from because it reflects the flowers that the bees are visiting uh, within five miles. So it actually has a f uh, an odor, a bouquet to it, and it has a flavor to it, and it has a color to it that's unique to the yard that it comes from. So a little bit of the history of our business. We incorporated as an LOC in 2013, and the original business was actually manufacturing beekeeping equipment. We were making boxes and selling them to beekeepers. In 2014, we started selling honey. In 2015, we started selling bees, manufacturing because we couldn't keep up when we became a distributor for a, uh, for a large company. And then in 2016, my original, and John joined the business in uh, 2015, and then my original partner, Ed, left the business in 2016. 2017 is when we converted to a specific benefit corporation. 2018, we started sending bees out to California. 
for pollination contracts. Now this year we're not doing equipment sales at all. We're just focusing on honey production and bee production and, um, and the alm almond pollination. This year we're going to run about 130 colonies of bees. The typical hobbyist, by the way, runs about two or three colonies. We're going to be running 130 colonies this year, give or take. So we should end up with about 15 barrels of honey by uh, the end of the summer, uh, assuming all goes well. These are some of our customers. Pa uh, this is a partial list, past and present. These are the, the stores, the restaurants, the bars, the coffee shops that are using our honey. It's all regional, um, mostly around Rochester. We do a lot of education. That's part of our B Corp work that we do. Um, Eagle Bluff, I'm scheduled to be there on Saturday. Uh, John was just in Red Wing last Saturday, so we do a lot of beekeeping classes, and this is just a partial list. And then we do direct-to-consumer sales through events. We were a vendor for the first time at Thursdays on First. Last year it was a really good place for us to be. It's a lot of work, but it's a good place to be. Uh, we would do more of these, but summertime we're pretty busy running colonies, and then some of us have a day job, so uh, that kind of keeps me busy too. So some things we haven't figured out related to bees. Uh, it's hard to keep bees alive these days. There's a mite. There's chemicals that are in the landscape that are impacting colony health. It's not unusual to lose 25 to 50 percent of your colonies um, as a beekeeper. That means if you're, uh, if you're, it would be the equivalent of a dairy herd losing half their cows, right? So it's hard to maintain your profitability. There's changing land practices, so the amount of honey that a colony of bees produces is drops significantly. So that would be the remaining cows that you have are producing less milk, to draw the analogy. And finally, uh, another one that we deal with, cheap corn means that Americans are getting their sugar through high fructose corn syrup. And the average American consumes 152 pounds of sugar through high fructose corn syrup every year and one pound of honey. So the cows are dying, they're producing less milk, and everybody's drinking Mountain Dew. That would be the analogy. <laughs> so does it still sound like a great place to uh, start a business? Okay, some things that we haven't figured out from a business perspective, and maybe somebody in the room can help us with this. We need help with our online direct-to-consumer sales. Selling honey online, it can be done, and we do it, but not to the extent that we would like to. We would like to do more of it. It tends to be an impulse purchase at an event or in the grocery store, so people don't typically go online to buy honey, and we would like to change that. Regional and beyond sales and distribution, we're schlepping stores, we're the honey to the stores ourselves. We would love to find somebody who could do sales for us and get distribution figured out for us. Video production, we want to build a YouTube following, build a YouTube channel and we can increase our social media following that would all feed into our direct-to-consumer sales online with some help on video production. And the last one is really hard, just as we get older, gravity keeps getting stronger and it's, the boxes get heavier. Uh, I'll wrap it up there and I'll take questions. Thank you. Contacted folks at AURI, Agriculture Institute Research. No. So, um, to my knowledge, they're they're good at advising local food companies in regards to distribution and, okay. and maybe doing some research. So it might be a shout out to. Yeah, maybe we can connect afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Nick. Is there any funding that you can get government wise because bees are dying to purchase more and help? Uh, yeah, so there are there's a program where you can get reimbursed for bee losses. Um, we're not at, I, I'm not sure we're at a size where we can qualify for that program. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah okay. um, you talked about potentially trying to sell more online. <coughs> yeah. Have you looked at uh, trying to partner with like, some of those on those like buy a meal online and ship it to your door, like, I can't think of any names, they're kind of brandless maybe, right. one, they, they sell Blue Apron, yeah. Blue Apron, yeah. Blue Apron yeah. yeah, have you tried using them as a distribution? No, not yet, no, we've really been so focused on figuring out how to keep the bees healthy and to grow our production, we haven't focused on that piece yet. <laughs> so just to piggyback on that, uh, the Rochester Farmers Market is starting this new program this year called the Aggregation Project, okay. where we take, um, farmers and or distributors like you who have mm -hmm. a product and we are getting customers 
who are buying CSAs or directly purchasing from that aggregation project. Right. So that's maybe something that we can connect with as well yeah. and see if we can get your product in that. I'd love to learn more about that. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I sell for HF there. And yeah. I work with youth development in the right. university system. And this is the year for the whole university agriculture uh, extension areas of youth development. Okay. Um, how are you interlinked with the whole University of Minnesota? With this is a legislative year to support the university with the agriculture and recipes and, and getting it into the homes and um, you know I I could see it explode. Mm -hmm. You got are, how are you uh, are you hooked up with them or totally yep. ingrained with them? So actually, uh, a side gig to my side hustle is working for the University of Minnesota part term in the Extension Office awesome. as an educator awesome. in their apiary program. So we actually awesome. have a, the University of Minnesota has a mentoring apiary here in town, and I'm the good, better, or worse, I'm the instructor for that. Yeah, because that's that for the apiary. whole life sciences DMC yeah. journey to growth thing. I could see that as just like going crazy wild. Right. Right. I was going to ask you why you chose the B Corp. Um, so the, the question about the uh, specific benefit corporation, um, like all things legislative, it, there's actually a cost to us to do that. There's not a tax benefit to us doing that. We have to file a report every year and we have to pay a ch write a small check to them every year. It's really more for marketing. It's a way to differentiate ourselves. First of all, it's something we were doing anyway. We were doing a lot of marketing anyway. We were doing it and this is just a way to differentiate ourselves and we've picked up some customers because we are a B Corp. Chris. I was just going to piggyback on the um, on the mention of Blue Apron. There is local crate, which is something that's more local here. It's actually based in, in Minnesota. It's, it's doing a similar thing where it's meal prep, but it's yep. using local foods. That might be something to look into when you start talking about distribution. Great. Um, going a little bit beyond. And then on the on the YouTube side of things, is there anybody out there already doing education on YouTube around bee um, bee raising or? or Honey production or anything along those lines, that might be a really good way to be able to get yourself out there right. while just taking the stuff you're already doing for education and putting it on YouTube and continuing on that. There are a lot of videos online on beekeeping, and um, some of them are actually good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> most of them aren't. Uh, but we tend to be an opinion of beekeepers, we have a lot of opinions, and uh, so um, there are a lot of them out there. Um, differentiating ourselves with some pretty cool videos. We've shot some neat videos, that, uh, but we just haven't been able to leverage them. So that's we have work to do there. We do put the best of the YouTubes, uh, I think they can hear me, the best of the YouTube, so to speak, around beekeeping on our website. We have an education page for beekeepers uh, that gets quite a few hits. We could upgrade they're, they're, they're not ours. They're not ours, but we made that clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, working with Bench Cube uh, Vocational Education and Extension, um, uh, the whole possibility of are you inter, um, inter, um, in the cooperative ed um, area, some rural education, but in the education realm where you can go into the schools and actually serve it or promote it within the, the food service areas within the school as an extension off of the farmer's markets? Because oh, they're, they're trying to get into, you know, gardening and all that right. agriculture, you know, kind of thing. Uh, have yeah. you looked into that at all? No, we haven't. We, do, we get contacted by a lot of schools to give talks. John does a lot of that. But, but taking that a step we'll further. Talk, we'll yeah. talk, because with the yeah. educate, I, I can see that vocational education extension. Sure. Back against the wall. Uh, back to online. You know, like podcasting, a lot of these stuff, if you can get um, just option, opportunities to be a guest. Uh, so if there's another YouTube channel that already does beekeeping, mm -hmm. you can contact them and say, hey, I'm in Minnesota, this is what I'm doing, right. I'm doing on your show. Right. Um, we just did, a, great too. Yeah. We did our first uh, uh, podcast with the co-op over in Northfield a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. you. That's, right. That's good advice. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of intrigued the part about, <clears throat> because it's not pasteurized, yeah, and it's not that <laughs> uh, But the thing where you say the honey has a different color based on mm -hmm. the local plants and bouquet, right. Right. And is that a differentiator? How many other people out there are doing or promoting that type of thing? So and I think that's the value of the local honey, the, of the big box brands. It's, it's literally millions of pounds of honey that's all blended together. So, so it's very is there a different. way? to wedge in with that where you could put together 
some kind of best practices thing mm -hmm. and right. trademark it or do something where if a local person follows your steps, right. they can get your brand on it. And yeah, because perhaps, that's, I've yeah. never heard of that before. Not that right. I know a lot about bees, but right. you know that just struck me as something unique. Right. Yeah. And you need Single to be. Batch. Yeah. You need to be unique. <laughs> Single yeah. 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 What I'm exploring. I've been talking to John about this. I I, I have a million dollar idea every day. Um, and I always give him a three count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it still sticks around. What what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the name of the yard on the bottle starting next year. Mm -hmm. So so um, and I, and there's a way to do that. We we trace it through the extraction process and into the barrels. So then to be able to put a label on the bottle as we're bottling, this is from this yard, and then have a profile of that bee yard out on our website. I think that would be a nice connection to make. We have like, uh, oh, he's giving me the pickle on there. Do you have, do you have like specific requirements of the farmers in California, like that they have to use certain kind of chemicals or not use chemicals? Or do we don't have a lot of control over what the farmers are using on, on the sure. crops out there. Um, and so that's always a challenge. Um, if the, big, the biggest thing is making them aware. They don't want to harm the bees. So if they're aware that there are bees within their flight zone, if they're doing uh, spraying, for example, then they can help us um, close up the hives on the day they're doing it or whatever it is. Uh, but the biggest thing is raising awareness that we are even there. Yeah. Is there a market for the wax? Or, and if not, what do you do with it? There is a market for the wax. It's pretty small. It's very labor intensive to process it. And we've got, I, don't know, I think we've got about 20 pounds of it. And then I've got a bunch of unprocessed wax that's sitting in the garage. I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, it's pretty labor intensive. It's a small market. You know, it's $10, $12 a pound, but there's a lot of effort that goes into uh, getting that to a um, sellable stage. Yeah. In regards to video production, are you looking for video production team to shoot your videos, or are you looking for growth strategy for YouTube, or what's the what's the need? There? It's probably more uh, we're shooting them out in the yard as we're going, and it's really more on the production end. Yeah. You know, post post production editing and yeah. stitching together a story with the pictures we're taking in the videos. Yeah. Okay. Um, where have you gone with the come? Uh, where are you at with that, like the possibility of going into the commercial area or, or the, um, um, I mean, vocational foods area like Hormel or, or um, Walter Mill or um, that, you, that you do it in bulk um, for, for producing products? That, can, so can, can you manufacture it? So most, most of the imported honey uh, is going into manufacturing. Oh, okay. So things like honey nut Cheerios. That's not a place we want to go. That's not our market. Okay, that's what I wanted to Price know. Price points too low. I mean, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, we've got grade A honey that we don't want to do that. No, you want it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the last question that we customarily ask is what can we do other than eating your honey? <laughs> and going to Facebook. <laughs> and going to Facebook. <laughs> um, so yellow is the new green. Leave your dandelions alone. Let them grow. It's okay. You'll be all right if you don't have a lot of green. And uh, Creeping Charlie is okay, too. Bees love Creeping Charlie. Bees love dandelions. Just let them grow. That'd be great. Thank you.